The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 1 through 10, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded in November of 1968 in Los Angeles. Samjaya said, Seeing Arjuna full of compassion and very sorrowful, his eyes brimming with tears, Madhusudana, Krishna, spoke the following words. The Supreme Personality said, My dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the progressive values of life. They do not lead to higher planets, but to infamy. Report. The now, Arjuna was sympathetic. Uh, with his brothers and relatives and he was practically crying uh, with tears uh, in his eyes and Krishna says that it is non-alien, it is not befitting uh, for, a, for an alien. Let's see. <clears throat> he was so compassionate but still it is not approved by Krishna. Well, Third thought. Hmm. The Sanskrit word Bhagavan is explained by the great authority, Parasara Muni, the father of the Ashadev. The Supreme Personality possesses all riches, entire strength, entire fame, entire beauty, entire knowledge, and entire renunciation. It's called Bhagavan. <coughs> there are many persons who are very rich, very powerful, very beautiful, very famous, very learned, and very much detached. But no one can claim that he is possessor of all these opulences entirely. Such a claim is applicable to Krishna only, and as such he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No living entity, including Brahma, can possess such opulence. Neither Lord Shiva nor even Narayana can possess such opulence as fully as Krishna. By analytical study of such possessions, it is concluded in the Brahma Samhita by Lord Brahma himself that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Nobody is equal to or above him. He is the primeval Lord or Bhagavan, known as Govinda, and he is the supreme cause of all causes. It is stated as follows. There are many personalities possessing the qualities of Bhagavan, but Krishna is supreme over all of them, because none can excel him. He is the supreme person, and his body is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. He is the primeval Lord, Govinda, and the cause of all causes. In the Bhagavatam also there is a list of many incarnations of the supreme personality of Godhead. But Krishna is described therein as the original personality from whom many, many incarnations and personalities of Godhead expand. It is stated in this way, all the lists of the incarnations of Godhead submitted herewith are either plenary expansions or parts of the plenary expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. Therefore, Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, the source of both Super-Soul and the Impersonal Brahman. In the presence of the Supreme Person, Arjuna's lamentation for his kinsmen is certainly unbecoming, and therefore Krishna expressed his surprise with the word Kutas, where from? Such unmanly sentiments were never expected from a person belonging to the civilized class of men known as Aryans. The word Aryan is applicable to persons who know the value of life and have a civilization based on spiritual realization. Persons who are led by the material conception of life do not know that the aim of life is realization of the absolute truth, Vishnu or Bhagavan. Such persons are captivated by the external features. But the at the present moment, they claim that we belong to the Aryan family, but uh, they have not the qualification of a <coughs> of an Aryan. 
the real qualification is described there. <coughs> uh, simply, Arjuna was little uh, flickering. Uh, he showed his little weakness, and he was at once condemned as non-Aryan. Oh, you are just saying you are symptom of a non-Aryan, and by Krishna. So the Aryan word uh, is not ordinary. To become Aryan means a perfect human being, as far as possible. That is Aryan civilization. Go on. <coughs> Such persons are captivated by the external features of the material world, and therefore they do not know what liberation is. Persons who have no knowledge of liberation from material bondage are called non-Aryans. Arjuna was trying to deviate from his prescribed duties, declining to fight, although he was a kshatriya or warrior. This act of cowardice is described as befitting the non-Aryans. Such deviation from duty does not help at one in the, progress, in the progress of spiritual life, nor does it even give one the opportunity of becoming famous in this world. Lord Krishna did not approve of the so-called compassion of Arjuna for his kinsmen. So-called compassion. Uh, you are thinking uh, that by showing that compassion he will be, uh, I want to say, eulogized by Krishna, but Krishna condemned it. Yes, yeah. the opposite. <coughs> In other words, uh, Krishna is very strict of. Uh, that is the qualification of Krishna and his associates. Bhajyadapi kathod and kusumadapi kamal. Softer than the flower and harder than the thunderbolt. Two sides. When Krishna is strict, he is harder than the thunderbolt. And when he is soft, he is softer than the flower. <coughs> These two examples are given. Bajjadapi katho kusmadapi kama. So, Krishna is not lenient to his friend or to his devotee. <coughs> Because that leniency will not help him. Uh, will not help him. Sometimes he becomes, he appears to be very uh, hard for the devotee. But he is not hard. Just like father sometimes becomes very strict. <coughs> that is good. <coughs> that will really prove how, how Krishna's and, and hardness will grow his uh, salvation. At the end, Arjuna will admit, by your mercy, my illusion is now over. <coughs> so this sort of picture by, um, from God on, on, on the devotee sometimes misunderstood. Because we are always accustomed to accept what is immediately very pleasing. But sometimes we'll find that we are not getting which is immediately very pleasing. But we should not be disappointed. We shall stick to Krishna. That is Arjuna's position. Go on. O oh, son of Krita. Do not yield to this degrading importance. Hmm. Degrading importance. Uh, he doesn't want to see <laughs> his devotee, a coward, an important. Uh, so, the so-called uh, qualification, importance, uh, uh, nigger, uh, that is not qualification for devotee. He must be very uh, and everywhere, very expert and fit. Krishna uh, wants to see. 
Wow. It does not become you. Give up such petty weakness of heart and arise, O oh chastiser of the enemy. He's specially addressing chastiser of the enemy. Uh, there is no excuse. You must be chastiser. Uh, not that because I become Krishna conscious, uh, I'll be uh, <coughs> very humble. You must be humble, but it can in, in need. If there is need, it shall be thunderbolt. Uh, there is Krishna in Sakti. Hmm. Arjuna said, O oh, killer of Madhu, Krishna, how can I counterattack with arrows in battle personalities like Bhishma and Drona who are worthy of my worship? Hmm. Of course all explanations are not there. Uh, here these words, uh, Krishna addressed Arjuna, a chastiser of enemy. And uh, Arjuna addresses Krishna, Madhusudan, are the killer of the demon Madhu. Yes, you are you are addressing me as chastiser of enemy, but do you think my grandfather and my teacher they are my enemies? You killed demon Madhu, therefore your name is Madhusudan. But you are asking me to kill my grandfather and teacher. That is the hint. It is all right that your name is Madhusudan, you killed one demon whose name was Madhu. But you are asking me Bhishma Sudan. Bhishma is my grandfather and Drona Sudan. Sudan means killer. So how can it be that? No, that is the answer. It is better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers. Even though they are avaricious, they are nonetheless superior. If they killed, then are, if they are killed, then our spoils will be tainted with This is another indication how superiors should be shown respect. <coughs> Arjun says, although they have become avaricious, still they are my superior. Avaricious, why? They have got full affection for me. Ah, my grandfather, Vishma, has got full affection for me. And Dronacharya, I am his very dear student, so he has also my uh, very affection, good affection for me. But because Duryodhana has paid them, he has accepted their service. Paid, so average. Uh, simply for money, in spite of so much affection and intimate relationship, uh, they have uh, accepted the service of Dujyodhan, uh, counting on money. So therefore they are avaricious. But in spite of their being avaricious, they are my respectful. This is respect. This is respect. That the respectful person whom uh, who is my respectful, even there are some <coughs> characteristics who does not de- uh, command respect, he still respect should be offered. This is uh, respectful offering. Yes. Sometimes it may be. The example is given uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, I'll find. Apite sudurāchāra bhajati mamananabha. Sadhuri Vasamantra. Even a devotee sometimes found not acting properly. But because he has got that unflinching faith and devotion upon me, Krishna says, therefore he is sent. Only for that one qualification. He does not know except Krishna. So, to such person even some <coughs> flaws are found in their character. Just like we have imposed some rules that uh, elicits 
sexual essence and the intoxication meat eating and so many things so of course uh, intentionally one should not break these laws but even sometimes we may find that there is some flaw in one's part suppose if i see somebody is smoking but he is doing krishna consciousness very nicely so we should not deride uh, we shall give him concession to reform uh, that it does not mean that because he has accidentally a uh, small uh, smoking and that does not mean he has become immediately uh, disqualified as as arjuna is saying although they have become avaricious is still their mind superior is still is still their mind superior this is uh, this is called unflinching faith in spite in spite of seeing my respectful uh, superior uh, abominable hmm. not willingly but by accident i still i should not withdraw my respect that is you hmm. know do we know which is better conquering them or being conquered by them the sons of chitrastra whom if we killed we should not care to live are now standing before us on this battlefield proper arjuna became perplexed in this connection not knowing whether he should execute the fighting with the risk of committing unnecessary violence although it is the duty of the kshatriyas or whether he should not and prefer instead to live by begging because if he did not conquer the enemy begging would be the only means left for his living there are no cert- there is there was no certainty of victory because either side might emerge victorious these are his causes of perplexity how you are thinking that has been <coughs> tried to be explained yes wow. even if there was victory awaiting them because their cause was justified still if the sons of Dhritarashtra should die in battle it would be very difficult to live in their absence <coughs> under the circumstances that would be another kind of defeat all these considerations by Arjuna definitely proved that he was not only a great devotee of the Lord, but that he was also highly enlightened and had complete control over his mind and senses. <coughs> his desire to live by begging, although he was born in the royal household, is another sign of detachment. He was fully in the quality of forbearance, as all these qualities, combined with his faith in the words of instruction of Sri Krishna, the spiritual master give evidence it is concluded that arjuna was quite fit for liberation unless the senses are controlled there is no chance of elevation to the platform of knowledge and without knowledge and devotion there is no chance of liberation arjuna was competent in all these attributes over and above his enormous attributes in the, in his personal relations God. Now I am confused about this. <coughs> yes, what is it? Now I am confused about duty and have lost all composure because of weakness. In this condition I am asking you to tell me clearly what is destiny. Now I am your disciple and the soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. Report. By nature's own way the complete system of material activities is a source of perplexity for everyone in every step there is perplexity and it behooves one therefore to approach the bona fide spiritual master who can give one the proper guidance for executing the purpose of life all vedic literatures advise us to approach a bona fide spiritual master to get free from the perplexities of life which happen without our desire they appear like a forest fire which takes place without being set by anyone similarly the world situation is such 
that perplexities of life automatically appear without our, our wanting such confusion. Nobody wants fire, and yet it takes place, and we are perplexed. <coughs> the Vedic wisdom therefore advises that in order to solve the pers in order to solve the perplexities of life and to understand the science of the solution, one must approach a spiritual master who is the disciplic succession. A person with a bona fide spiritual master uh, is supposed to know everything. One should not therefore remain in material. This is a translation of a Vedic person. Acharjavan Purusa Veda. Acharjavan, one who has Acharya as his guidance, he is supposed to know everything. Acharjavan Purusa Veda. That is given there. One should not therefore remain in material perplexity, but should approach such a teacher. This is the purport of this verse. Who is the man in material perplexity? It is he who does not understand the problems of life. <coughs> in the Gargar Upanishad, this is described as follows. He is a miserly man who does not solve the problems of life as a human, and who thus quits this world like the cats and dogs without understanding the science of self-realization. He is called a miserly man. This human form of life is the most valuable asset for the living entity who can utilize it for solving the problems of life. Therefore, one who does not utilize this opportunity is a miser. Now the miser does not properly use his asset. Suppose you have got one million dollars, you keep it only, you do not use it properly, or you spoil it, then you are called miser. But if you utilize it properly and gain out of it, then you are intelligent. Similarly, Gaggopanesha says, uh, he, he, the Gaggo makes distinction, two classes. <coughs> One class is one class of men, he says, uh, Kripana. Kripana means miser. <coughs> and another class of men, he says, Brahmana, Brahmin. So he classifies, Etat Vidityaja Prayati Sa Brahmana. This self realization process, uh, we shall die, it is sure. Uh, every one of us will die, but we should not die like cats and dogs. Uh, that is the difference. We may die, we must die, nobody can escape death. But uh, before death we must know what is self and self realize They are Brahmins. Those who are trying uh, to understand what he is, what is his relation with God, and how he should live. They are called Brahmans. And those who are living like cats and dogs, simply eating, sleeping, mating, and dying. Uh, so they are dying like cats and dogs. So death is inevitable. That is also advised by Prahlad Maharaj in his instruction to his class fellows. Kumarunasarit Pragya Dharman Bhagavatam. My dear friends, <coughs> from this beginning of life, we are now five years old, uh, from this life we should try to understand Bhagavad Dharma. Bhagavad Dharma means to understand our relationship with the Supreme Law. That is called Bhagavad Dharma. Manasang uh, <coughs> Adhurvam, Tadavya Adhurvam, although uh, the life is temporary, but it is uh, very suitable for self-realization. So therefore one should begin this process uh, <coughs> from childhood. <coughs> 
just like <coughs> modern education system, the children are given some playthings, engineering. Uh, I've seen in your country especially, uh, he is given railway line uh, and the, so many things. He can understand how a railway system is working or engineering so that from the very beginning of his life he is getting idea and he may catch up some line of activities. Similarly, this Krishna conscious education also should be given from the very beginning of life. That is the mistake of the modern civilization. Everyone is becoming engineering, technologies, or medical man, or so many. But the real problem of life is to understand the self. There is no educational system. Throughout the whole world, what is this self, uh, what is this need, how it is constituted, how it is working, so many things. <clears throat> In Boston, there was a Massachusetts techno technological, you, you, you know that? Yes. So I explained that, that here is a nice technological institute. But where is your, this technological department to understand? And so the student very much appreciated it. Uh, <coughs> actually, this is the defect. Uh, we, we know this will be the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, that there is something which minus this body is useless. But nobody is trying to understand what is that something? There is no technological institute to understand what is that something. Is it not defective? And still they are very much proud of advancement of education. The real thing is missing. You have got all departments for comforts of this body. For maintaining this body. But the thing which minus this body, the body is useless, what about that thing? That is Bhagavad Gita. That is Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is teaching that technology. You should try to understand this. Bhagavad Gita is not technology for the external body. Bhagavad Gita is the technology of the Dehi, which is within the body, which is moving the body, which is keeping the body fit. This body is fit, very nice, very beautiful, very attractive. How long? So long the spirit soul is there. As soon as the spirit soul is off, immediately it begins to decompose. There may be a nice, beautiful young girl. Everyone is hankering after her. But as soon as the spirit soul is gone, nobody will like to accept. Immediately it becomes useless. So the, nobody is uh, very serious. What is that thing? Uh, and that is what works. Yeah. <coughs> no, spirit soul is not old. The body is body is changing. That is the process. That will be explained. Spirit soul is evergreen. The body is changing. That is to be honest. Uh, body is changing. Uh, that you everyone can understand. Just like 
In your childhood, your body was there. That's this child, a different body. And when that child will be younger, that will be different body. But uh, the spirit soul is there in this body and that body. So if this is the proof that spirit soul does not change, the body change. This is the proof. I am thinking of my childhood. That means I am the same I, which I was existing in my childhood. And I remember when my childhood I was doing this, I am doing that. But the childhood body is no longer. That is not. Therefore, it is conclusion that my body has changed, but I am the same. Is it not? This is simple truth. So this body will change, still I shall remain. I may enter into another body. That doesn't matter. But I shall remain. Tatha dehantaram prati bhiraspattanam As I am changing my body, even in the present circumstance, similarly, the ultimate change does not mean I am dead. I enter into another. That also explains Vāsāṅsi jinnāni jatā. That I change. <coughs> Just like when I was not sannāsi, I was dressing like any gentleman. Now I've changed my dress. That does not mean ah, that I have died. No, I've changed my body. That's all. I've changed my dress. A miserly person wastes their time in being overly affectionate for family, mm-hmm. society, country, etc., and the material conception of life. One is often attached to family life to wife and children and other members of the base, on the basis of skin disease. The pre think that they are able to protect their family members from death, or the pre thinks that his family or society can save him from death. Such family attachment can be found even in the lower animals who also take care of children. Being intelligent, Arjuna could understand that his affection for family members and his wish to protect them from death were the causes of his perplexity. Although he could understand that his duty to fight was awaiting him, still, on account of miserly weakness, he could not discharge the duty. He is therefore asking Lord Krishna, the Supreme Spiritual Master, to make a definite solution. He offers himself to Krishna as a disciple. He wants to stop friendly talk. Talks between the master and the disciple are serious, and now Arjuna wants to talk very seriously before the recognized spiritual master. Krishna is therefore the original. Here is a technique. The same Krishna and same Arjuna, they are talking as friends. Then what was the necessity of uh, <coughs> Arjuna? Uh, accepting Krishna as spiritual master. The same Arjuna and same Krishna, they will talk, but what is the necessity of accepting as spiritual master? That means, after accepting spiritual master, he will not argue, he will simply accept whatever he says. That is the thing. Friendly talks, equal level. Uh, he, Krishna was talking something and he was replying. Uh, so that argument has no end. But when he accepts him as spiritual master, uh, there is no more argument. One has to accept whatever he says. Therefore he is accepted. Uh, after this, uh, Arjuna will never say, this is wrong, this is no, or I don't agree, no. <coughs> he will accept. The acceptance of spiritual master means to accept anything, whatever he says. Therefore one has to select a spiritual master whom he can completely uh, <coughs> surrender. 
That is the technique. <coughs> oh, Veda Vakka. Just like the Vedic injunction. Nobody can deny. Similarly, oh, spiritual master is also representative of Veda. Atajavan Purusha Veda. <coughs> so, similarly, it is like, like Vedic injunction. So spiritual master has also got the grave duty. He has to instruct the disciple in such a way that he may not be misled. And that is not possible because the spiritual master is he who is, who will simply speak from authoritative sources. He will speak from Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad, or what was spoken by Narada, Vyasa. That is his authority. He does not say, in my opinion, it is. No. Therefore, it is perfect. It is coming from the disciple section. And if one agrees to such instruction, then he is also perfectly advancing. It is not difficult to understand. So, he is accepting. Now I accept you as my spiritual master, you teach me. Is that the statement? Yes. Mm. What is that? He offers himself to Krishna as a disciple. He wants to stop friendly talk. Mm. Krishna is therefore the original spiritual master in the science of the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. And Arjuna is the original disciple in understanding the Gita. How Arjuna understands the Bhagavad Gita is stated in the Gita itself. And yet foolish mundane scholars explain that one need not submit to Krishna as a person, but to the unborn within Krishna. There is no difference between Krishna's within and without, and one who has no sense of this understanding is the greatest fool, the greatest pretender. I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not even be able to destroy it if I win an unrivaled kingdom on the earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven. Samjaya said, Having spoken thus, Arjuna, chastiser of enemies, told Krishna, Govinda, I shall not fight, and fell silent. O descendants of Bharata, at that time Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, the following words. So, the Arjuna was so serious and Krishna was smiling. <laughs> Just see the fool what he is doing. <laughs> Therefore, there was necessity of instructing Bhagavad Gita. The fool has to be instructed. Yes. This is, he was smiling. This is childish. <laughs> he was very serious. Oh. Just like sometimes a child is very serious, and the father is smiling. So now Bhagavad Gita will be spoken. He has accepted Krishna as spiritual master. Now he will teach. So what does he teach? Next. The Blessed Lord said, hmm. While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. That, that, this is a <coughs> first person, Krishna, Krishna as teacher. What is that? Read it again. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. Yes. Asatyana nisuta sang prajnavada answer. That you are uh, lamenting for a thing which no learned man does. That means you are not learned. But you are talking just like a learned man. What is that? You are talking? Yeah. What speaking learned words? Yes. You are, more. you are speaking learned words, but your behavior shows that you are not learned because you are lamenting on a subject with no learned man lament. And politely he says that you are not learned, but you are talking just like a learned man. That we will find. Doctor frog. <laughs> Speaking 
like a very great philosopher, <coughs> just like here, that Dr. Radha Krishna that says, it is not to Krishna, but within Krishna. That fool does not know that there is no within and without of Krishna. That that Krishna is within and without. That he does not know. And and he is uh, uh, accepted as a very great planet man. Dr. Krav, not Dr. Krishna. <laughs> this is going on in the world. They are posing themselves as very learned. But this can be detected by uh, devotees, uh, who is learned and who is not learned. Others cannot detect. Others will be misled. Uh, the devotees, they have got uh, such eyes to see that they can immediately uh, I mean, discriminate who is a fool, who is a learn. <coughs> so, uh, it is not necessarily that one has to become pure devotee immediately. Just like uh, we are also following the instruction of our spiritual master. I don't claim that I am pure devotee or perfect. But my only qualification is that I am trying to follow the instruction of the perfect. Uh, similarly, this is called disciplic success. <coughs> Just like here it is stated that uh, Krishna is the original spiritual master and Arjuna is the original student. So Arjuna said, that uh, hmm. My dear Krishna, whatever you are saying, I accept in total in the ten chapter. I, I don't make me just like Dr. Hara Krishna says, oh, it is not to Krishna, it is something else. He does not accept in that way. He says that whatever you are saying, I accept. I don't say that oh, the uh, you have got a separate thing within that is supreme, you are not supreme, so as person. This is impersonalist. The thing is do not know that Krishna has no such a conditioned soul, just like we are. I am different from my soul, I am inside my body, or I am soul different from the body. Krishna has no such differentiation. He does not know that. Because he is not following Krishna, the perfect spiritual master. He is following his some practical spiritual master. Therefore he has dismissed it. But if we follow Arjuna and Krishna, then we get the perfect knowledge. We may not be same person perfect, but as far as possible, if we follow the instruction as it is, that much perfect. And this way one will get perfection. <coughs> so one has to follow the same example, try to understand that a perfect uh, expert technology a technician and mechanic is working and somebody is working under his instruction. So this somebody, because he is strictly working under the instruction of the expert, he is also expert. He may not be ten percent expert, but his work is expert. Is that clear? Because he is working under the expert. Do you follow? So, if you follow pure devotee, then you are also pure devotee. It may not be hey, one is ten percent pure, because we are trying to raise ourselves from the conditional life. But if we strictly follow the pure devotee, then we are also pure devotee. So far we do, that is pure. 
So pure devotee does not mean uh, <coughs> one has to become immediately sun person pure. But if he sticks to the principle that we will follow a pure devotee, then his actions are, he is as good as a pure devotee. That is a, uh, it is not, uh, <clears throat> I am explaining in my own way, it is the explanation of Bhagavad. <clears throat> Mahajana jena gatasya pantha. We have to follow the footprints of pure devotees. Uh, it is said that tattu apatishya, if you want to become pure, by your arguments and logic, that is not possible. I may be defeated by another strong man who is stronger in argument than me. So this is not the way of becoming purified, tarko, simply arguing. Tarko apatishtya, sutayo vivhinya, sutayo scriptures. It's about uh, somebody sticks to the scriptures. The scriptures, there are different types of scripture. Uh, so, they are vivinna. Vivinna means different types. So how we can become purified by even by following the scriptures? Tattu apatishta sutayo vivinna nāsu munijyasyam matangana vinna muni means thoughtful, philosopher. If he follow a particular type of philosopher, oh, that is also not perfect. Because I may be under the care of a philosopher, rock philosopher. So that is also not uh, I mean, sure. Uh, Therefore, the, to become pure or to understand the essence of purity is very confidential. It is not to be acquired by our own efforts, by argument or by being expert in scripture or by becoming a philosopher in a similar way. It is very confident. Then, how? Mahajana jena gatasya. You have to follow a pure devotee. Acknowledge devotee. Similarly, in the Bhagavad Gita, if we follow Arjuna, then you understand Bhagavad Gita as it is. But if you don't follow Arjuna, if we follow somebody, doctor, rock, or create our own interpretation, then we remain impure. So Mahajana Jena Gatasapanta. We have to follow the footprints of Mahajana, great soul. So here is directly, you are meeting great soul, Arjuna. He is directly being taught Bhagavad Gita by the original teacher. Who can be greater authority than Arjuna? So as Arjuna accepts Bhagavad Gita, if you accept Bhagavad Gita in that way, then your study of Bhagavad Gita is perfect. It is very simple. Therefore, I am saying here that Krishna is the original teacher and Arjuna is the original student. So if you follow the original student, you understand Bhagavad Gita. Even Krishna is not present before you. He is present by his words. Uh, this is the way of uh, falling for what is pure. Yes. Can, can Krishna give us the ability to some someday remember every word that you are saying to us now? Because I, I, I myself, I forget so much. And I want to hear just how you are talking and I can. What is that? I don't know. I want to be able to hear you 
saying exactly what you're saying now. I want to always be able to hear it. But I forget. Why? My memory is very clear. Hello? If you try memory, well, maybe well, everything depends on cultivation. If you cultivate some something, your memory increases. Uh, everyone becomes expert, not in one day, but by cultivation. Similarly, if you try to remember, then your memory will help you to remember. It is not difficult. Uh, that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. So we have to try to remember Krishna. He is so beautiful. His instructions are so nice. If you simply remember uh, Krishna, and that was the perfection um, approved by Lord Chaitanya. Uh, I, I think I have narrated this story. When Lord Chaitanya was traveling in South India, <clears throat> in, uh, in a big temple, Rangarath temple, he went to uh, see the deity and he saw one Brahmin was reading Bhagavad Gita. And people were um, joking him, Ah, oh, uh, Mr. Brahmin, how you are reading Bhagavad Gita? Because they were their neighbors, they knew that this Brahmin, Brahmin was uh, was illiterate, and he was studying Bhagavad Gita. So they were joking. But the Brahmin did not care them. He was taking the book, and in his own way he was reading. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw this incident. He came to the Brahmin. So he asked the Brahmin, My dear Brahmin, what you are reading? So he could understand, uh, this uh, person is not joking with me, he's serious. So he explained, My dear sir, I am reading Bhagavad Gita. Unfortunately, I am illiterate. I do not know even the alphabets. Uh, why you are reading Bhagavad Gita? So he said that my spiritual master knows that I am illiterate, but he still he has asked me to read Bhagavad Gita. What can I do? Therefore I have taken this book and seen simply. I do not know how to read. Oh, that's all right, you cannot read, but I see that you are crying. Huh? How you are crying if you are not reading? Uh, yes, I am crying, of course. There is cause. What is that? Now, as soon as I take this Bhagavad Gita, I remember uh, Krishna. Uh, Krishna is sitting as driver, and Arjuna is hearing. I have heard the story. I know something of the instruction, but cannot read. So as soon as I take this book, this picture comes before me, and I simply think, oh, how Krishna is nice, that he has become a charioteer of his devotee. He is so great. Still, he has accepted a million service of his devotee. Uh, this gives me so much pleasure that I cry. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him. Your Bhagavad Gita reading is perfect. You have taken the essence. So this is the thing. If you simply remember Krishna is teaching Arjun and Arjun is hearing, if you simply remember the picture, that is sufficient. Even if you think that you cannot read. Because after all we have to become Krishna conscious. We haven't got to become a learned man to argue with another la a learned man. If it is possible, we can do that. But that does not make any difference. If I cannot argue with others, or if I cannot 
teach very nicely Bhagavad Gita to others. Simply if I remember this picture, that is perfect. Because we have to become Krishna conscious. We have to simply think of Krishna. You think in any way. Uh, that is your practice. Smartabam Satato Vishnu. This is the Indian. Uh, you have to think of Vishnu or this is Samadhi. This is meditation. This is Yoga Siddhi. Perfection of Yoga. So one who has learned to think of Krishna always, uh, he is already on the perfection of the state. Aradhita Jadihari Stapasata Tatkim. If one has come to this stage just to understand Krishna, the great, the supreme personality of God, and he surrendered so, Krishna, whatever you like, you do, and surrender. This is Aram. <coughs> then he doesn't require to undergo any austerities or penance. He is, everything is finished. And Narabhita Jadi Haristavasata Dakim. And if he does not come to this state, his so called scholarship, learned argument, this or that, all nonsense. Finished. Useless. One has to come to this stage. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya embraced the Brahmin. Yes, your study of Bhagavad Gita is perfect. Because one has to come to this stage, thinking of Krishna always. So if one does not come to this stage, simply by academic education, he says it should be like this, the interpretation should be like this, he's simply wasting time. Prabhupada. One has to come to this stage. Aradhita jadi hari stapasata taktim, naradhita jadi hari stapasata taktim. So, that is the perfection. Krishna, gopis. If they were cowherds girl, their father and mother, they were only ordinary village men keeping cows, they are so. What is their education? They were not Vedantis. But they learned to love Krishna. That was their qualification. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sacrifice Ramya Kaji Dupasana Brajavadvat Gavija. Oh, there is no better worship than that which was com- uh, contemplated by the gopis. Because they did not know what is Krishna, but they love Krishna, that's all. They love Krishna, that Krishna, because Krishna was God or Krishna was something great, no. Their natural affection was for Krishna. They could not stay even for a moment for, without seeing Krishna. That was the quality. This is Krishna consciousness. One has to come to perfect Krishna consciousness. Somewhere or other. That is perfection. That is everything. Yeah. You know, if one always thinks of Krishna, then he is perfect. And we should not forget. We have uh, presented so many formulas. Uh, why? And not the formulas are important, but the formulas will help me to remember Krishna always. It's like you are going to sell our magazines. So this magazine selling or taking some contribution is not our business. Our business is that we are spreading Krishna concept. People are hearing about something about Krishna. And because we are helping, we are also hearing. We are, we are also benefiting. When you speak to somebody uh, about Krishna, then I hear also Krishna, Sabanam Kirtana, the first preliminary step, hearing and chanting is going on. So in this way we shall take all opportunities so that twenty-four hours, whether I awake or sleeping, we shall always think of Krishna.
That is perfect. This chanting means always remembering Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna. Cooking, I am cooking for Krishna. I am driving for Krishna. I am going to preach for Krishna. I am distributing back to the other for Krishna. In this way, you always remember Krishna, that's all. That is it, make it perfect. No, suppose you are a selling uh, back to God. Does it not remind you, Krishna? Does it not remind you about Krishna? What for you are selling back to God? You could sell another popular magazine which could sell very nicely, quickly, thousands of copies. Why are you taking this back to God? For Krishna. You are not for business. You are not ordinary. Uh, I am a newspaper seller. Why you have taken back to God? Your motive is that people may know about Krishna. That is your motive. If, you, if magazine selling is your business, or you can take any uh, other uh, sense gratification magazine, there are so many, and you can sell, you can make some profit. So, we have to mold our life in such a way uh, that we shall always remember Krishna. Therefore, remembering Krishna is my primary business. And we have to act in such a way that we may not forget Krishna. That should be the principle. That is the secret. <laughs> Therefore it is uh, equally good for anyone. Because we can engage anyone in the business of Krishna. Hmm. If somebody has no, uh, I'm to say, knowledge, he can simply sweep over the floor of Krishna's temple. That will make him remembering Krishna, that I am cleansing the floor of Krishna's temple. He is as good as the editor of back to God. Yes. Yes, just as sleep means uh, your gross sense, uh, senses have stopped, uh, but your mind works. Therefore you dream. So if you practice your mind to be engaged in Krishna consciousness, in dream also you see that you are preparing prasadam and going to sell that to other. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, uh, some nights, when I feel hungry, I, I, I dream that I am eating Krishna Prasad, very sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is supplying me nice paratha, and I am eating. <laughs> oh. But uh, being uh, hungry, oh, my hunger is not satisfied, I am eating, eating. Still, <laughs> the dream is end. 
So, if you practice, uh, this is the, this is the technique. We have to practice in this way that when all functions of this body will be stopped at the time of death, oh, you can remember somewhere or other, Krishna, then success. Immediately success. That is the technique. 